everybody. It's Bob in 1KPR. Here we are again. And today I just want to quickly run through a, uh, a WWV uh, time display and decoder clock that we modified for the uh, for the radio club. Um, this is the uh, ESE model ES180 originally. And uh, if you're familiar with that, or you can look it up on the internet, we just took the uh, entire front panel off and modified it for our use. This technology is kind of uh, obsolete right now because <clears throat> uh, for uh, accurate timekeeping from Fort Collins, Colorado, uh, the uh, NIST National Institute of Standards, there's WWV out there. And they transmitted uh, this data for decades uh, from their atomic clock on uh, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20, and way back at 25 megahertz. Um, but after that, you know, we've had the uh, uh, the LF band 60 kilohertz clocks, which we all have hanging from our walls now, the so-called atomic clocks. Uh, that's kind of superseded this technology, and also. Uh, we have uh, uh, GPS, uh, time syncing uh, with uh, NIST as well. So uh, this is kind of dated technology. The thing is that WWV is still putting out uh, all those time codes and all that data uh, on those five uh, frequencies. The nice thing about this radio is that by selecting one of the five frequencies that we have here, uh, as ham operators or even shortwave listeners, we can uh, use those frequencies from Colorado, here in Connecticut anyhow, as uh, radio propagation condition beacons. Uh, I can turn this on to any one of the, the frequencies from 2.5 to 20 megs and hear the uh, atmospheric conditions and the propagations to the west of them about 2,000 or more miles. So, that's the utility of this thing. What we did is, with this particular unit is, uh, this is all originally set up with dip switches that crammed the, uh, uh, the receiver and the digital decoders and the display drivers. Uh, what I did was just bring the connections out from the uh, dip switches so that we could uh, switch here through various time zones for it, again, for the ham operators and for their logging functions. Uh, right now, it's uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon here in Connecticut, and I'm set to uh, Eastern Standard Time. I know it's a little hard to read that with this camera. Uh, but here we go to uh, Central Time. You can see it's noon there. Mountain Time is 11. And Pacific Time, it's 10 in the morning still. I also added Atlantic Time, which is out there for the people in Nova Scotia or uh, to the east of the east coast of Connecticut. And of course, there it's already 2 o'clock. I have the function of doing uh, 12 or 24 hour format. So from 1, let's see, that it's 1300 hours here. That's more more common for logging for hands. Uh, we could do, uh, right now we're in daylight savings time, but we can go back to standard time if we want to uh, here. And see if that will show up. No, I think the uh, the micro, until we reboot, the micro is remembering what, that we're in the daylight savings time. Um, we can also defeat the uh, U.S. or North American, I should say, time zones, and go to uh, straight to UTC, and we can see there that it's 6 a.m. If I went to 24-hour format the way I should, uh, I'm sorry, I said 6 a.m. It's 6 p.m. over at supper time. Uh, it's 1,800 hours over in the GMT. That's in UTC time. Uh, so we'll come back from England and. Uh, here we are, 1,300 hours, 1 o'clock in uh, Connecticut. Uh, the frequency, well, let's take a listen. I don't know if the 
if the mic is picking that up. The uh, uh, this time of day, that's 20 megahertz. Uh, the receiver is actually reading down into the mud. I can't hear the the audio, the recovered audio, but it is receiving the data. Uh, we'll read it two and a half meg. Let's we'll see if that how noisy that is. Then we'll go back to let's try ten. The band is pretty quiet right now. I'm still not hearing any data. Fifteen. Again, if you can't hear that, that's pretty quiet. And five megs. That's kind of noisy. This receiver has the feature of auto scan. It's about four seconds per minute. It looks for the best signal. So I can turn them all on. Let the thing run, and you can see that uh, it's it's scanning around until the AGC locks up on something that likes. Uh, we also have over here. I turn the audio down. Uh, we also have the ability to see any extracted data. This green light uh, from the carrier. It's double sideband, so it depends on which sideband is being affected by QSB or atmospheric fading. Uh, but when you see the green light flash, the yellow is carrier being received, and the green light is that there's actually data on it. And uh, you know, get it just there. It's uh, right now. It's, it's trying to figure out data from noise. Uh, we also have an audio uh, VU meter that shows us when we're up peaking at the top of the detector uh, range, the dynamic range of the detector. Over here, I don't have it wired in yet. Here's a bunch of LEDs that are going to be the signal strength meter calibrated around 50 microvolts, which is S9. I got that marked to 0 dB. We can go plus 6 or 12, actually, and down into the mud. Again, that circuit hasn't been connected yet. And uh, gain control so that we don't swamp the auto sensing circuits uh, with local pick up or a lot of noise on one band, for example, that would cause this thing to lock up. And we can pull that down until we get to the point where it says, hey, I don't have any signal. And then, of course, it'll, it'll turn red. Uh, so for now, during the day, we're going to keep that wide open. Uh, and, of course, if we're sending this out uh, to uh, some other source, uh, we can always defeat uh, the audio and just let it run as a clock. But again, it's really our uh, propagation beacon. And uh, that, that's its utility right now for, uh, for our radio. Account. And the fact that it keeps time is, uh, is an added bonus. Although, like I say, we have uh, the 60 hertz, kilohertz WWVB, and we also have uh, GPS timing. So we're never going to be late for lunch. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to have this up on my website at bobsamerica.com, bobsamerica.com, and uh, in a week or so. Uh, we have a few little tweaks to do, but uh, that's basically it. So, I want to thank you for looking. Uh, this is Bob, M1KPR. Have fun.